Speaking of which, um, I, I, I have this portrait of a lady, right? And it happens to be on fire. Maybe someone should make a film about a portrait of a lady on fire. Wow. We are the best at this, are we not? <laughs> You're the best. Girlhood and Tom by writer-director Celine Sciamma's latest film, Portrait de la Jeune Fille en Feu, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, finds us in the 18th century as we accompany Parisian portrait painter Marianne Noemi Merlon to the island home of Valerie Galino's Countess, where she is to paint the likeness of her daughter, Eloise Adele Nell. This portrait is to be sent to her Milanese suitor, and an unhappy Eloise refused to sit for the previous painter. Therefore, Marianne, presented to Eloise as a companion, must observe her subject stealthily, committing her features to memory to be painted later. Marianne's keen observation does not itself go unnoticed, and the act changes both the watcher and the watched. An erotic observer effect, and the two begin a romantic relationship though one doomed from the beginning due to circumstance of time, social standing and gender. Portrait can, and does, work simply as a compelling, beautifully shot and beautifully acted romance. But there's so much more there. The film has both female perspective and female gaze, and continues Shiyama's wonderful knack of making the story of a specific character, or here characters, universal with her attention to detail in things often as small as a glance, or lack thereof, or just a few words of dialogue speaking volumes and too many, all while Marianne and Eloise's relationship plays out. There's a lot of socio-political critique there, for example the subplot involving the maid Sophie, Luana Bajrami, her unwanted pregnancy, and the methods she must try to exert control over her own life and body, amongst other things. Claire Martin's photography is beautiful, presenting Portrait of a Lady in Fire almost as a series of paintings, artistic and mesmerising, yet without the lack of life or dynamism that so crippled Peter Weber's Girl with a Pearl Earring, a film that captured the look of Vermeer's work, but asphyxiated its world in so doing. That is emphatically not the case here, where the wild seas and cliffscapes, the blustering wind and the fierce heat of Eloise and Marianne keep the film gloriously, joyously alive. Music and its absence play a huge part in film success too. We, understandably, take for granted the ability to listen to music anywhere and any when, but Eloise is starved for music. Another desire, a need, that her life denies her. Fittingly, Shyama denies the film music also, using only diegetic sound, the wind and the waves almost becoming characters themselves, except for the few moments where music is played in the film's world, and one spine-tingling scene where spontaneous, ethereal, vocal sounds become a song sung by a group of women on a bonfire at night. The lack of music elsewhere makes this incredibly inf- effective, even more so as it accompanies a lingering stare between Eloise and Marianne, in which their feelings are finally, almost palpably transmitted. I've mentioned already that it's beautifully acted, but the final scene is something else altogether, and possibly one of the most incredible things I've ever seen, despite involving a character sitting and uttering no dialogue. And I'll describe it no further, and leave you to discover it for yourself. It's such a beautiful film, and one that, now that I'm talking about it, I think I like even more than I realised while watching. Obviously, therefore, I recommend it. Good. Um, I, I don't have anything negative to say about Portrait of Lady on Fire. It just it, it didn't grab me, um, which I am certain was a fault in me more than the film. I just wasn't... <laughs> I was in a really miserable mood while I was watching this, and it just... It didn't really uh, grab me in any particular way, but I don't have any negative things to say about it, so I'm not going to harp on about that too much. And I said I'll just uh, watch this again at some point when I was in a a slightly better mood, which uh, is probably what it deserves. And I've liked a lot of the director's previous work as well, so I'm I'm sure I'll be converted to this at some point in the future. Um, It's I can certainly back up what you're saying about it being a a very beautiful looking film. It's a stunning looking on a a number of occasions and uh, very well acted all the period details on point all that stuff it's a really very well made film 
was that it bounced off me is probably more fault on my part than the film, I'm fairly certain. So um, I will give this another go at some point when I'm in a, <laughs> a somewhat better frame of mind to approach it. But uh, yeah, yeah, as I say, nothing negative to say about it. I, uh, I certainly would not steer anyone away from it. Yeah, uh, mood can make such a difference too. It's weird, I was one of these films we were watching and I can't remember if it was this or not, but I was actually thinking about the fact that like, the mood you're in and how you're feeling about watching something can make such a difference where it's like mm-hmm. I mean, you never want to not enjoy a film yeah but i'd really been looking forward to watching this i'd wanted to see it for quite a while um and particularly having watched tomboy because a couple of months ago we did tomboy scott yeah and like really really liking it and having really liked girlhood i was like really looking forward to this and whether you know that plays into it or not like your as much your expectation but your hopes yeah <laughs> um, although when that, that's bit of me before and I've been really um, disappointed so maybe not but mood can certainly play a part but yeah for me it just I thought it was amazing and that that final scene was just incredible like, I, I, you can act that much and portray that much emotion while sitting still yeah. almost <laughs> that, that's ridiculous 